Okay, this lecture PowerPoint, whatever, is about the first of the chip removal processes we're going to be covering in drilling and making holes. But you'll find I'd like to do a little review of the pre prior um, unit. And so, review of measuring. The critical thing here, um, we're going to be measuring mostly length, sometimes weight, but um, our unit of measurement is going to be the decimal inch or the decimal divisions of an inch that's used by manufacturers in the U.S. Um, on the thing there that says first page to about tolerances, I'll be going into some tolerances a little bit later as we go into it, and you don't have a handbook, so um, if there are more references like that in these PowerPoints, I'll try to take them out before um, I see them, but I miss them sometimes. And remember, there was vernier and digital readouts. We're going to go in the modern world and use digital readouts. And remember the tools to measure. Um, a little six-inch ruler is very valuable. If you ever, um, if you're going to stay in any kind of manufacturing and do any kind of shop work, it's a handy thing to have. The micrometer. Um, there's a lot of different types of micrometers, but the main one is the one that does the outside dimensions. Um, we've got the vernier dial. In some ways, that's still considered the gold standard if you're practiced at it, because you have to actually be very experienced with it to understand that fourth decimal place. Then there's um, digital micrometers also, and the calipers that can do inside, outside, and depth in one tool, make it the most valuable tool out there. There's vernier types, um, but they're not, those aren't used very often. There's dial types, and then there's digital types. Um, and the digital types, the fourth decimal place is usually a zero or a five, um, so it'll show up on the readout. Um, but you're getting into such fine measurements to the reason the, the vernier micrometer can do a little bit better than that is that you could actually figure out one of those actual decimal places but it then becomes a judgment call that's based on experience and um, didn't mention it earlier but there's a collect pins and uh, blocks of exact sizes called gauge pins and blocks and there's some videos in with the, the drilling videos that explain those. Now, how does this help with hole making? Well, hole making is one of the most common things that are done in um, manufacturing. But they need to be a specific size and you can't just change the size of it. You can, if you're uh, using a laser to cut a hole, you can make them different sizes, um, but those are that's slow. Drilling is the most common way of doing it. Um, there are some kind of drills that will have some steps in it, um, and you can use some of them for th sheet metal. Um, it's often used for wood, but um, the common twist drill, which we'll be talking about, is the most frequently used um, one. And you're going to see that they're different sizes and different names. Um, manufacturing has a whole lot more than you're probably familiar with if you went and picked up a set of drills at the hardware store. Um, there are some other ways of, of making holes. You can stamp them. Um, laser cut them, use a sand or blasting, a water blasting technique, all kinds of ways that you could do it. Um, but we're mostly going to be drilling with a twist drill. Now let's talk about the sizes. You'll see in one of the videos that um, I made, um, I show you a full set of drill bits. The fractional drills, 
go from 1 16th to three, well, 3 inches. The, that set doesn't go that big, but you can actually buy a 3 inch drill. Um, they usually go up to um, three, 3 quarters of an inch in a set. Um, only in, fra in increments and fractions. Um, you got number drills, and that's the number each drill size is given a number and in the video that's the ones across the back um, the, the one that I showed you that's actually my personal set of drills um, goes only from 60 doesn't go from 80 um, and then it goes it stops at number one who in the heck started this that we would make little drills with big numbers <laughs> I don't know I didn't do it I didn't make the rules, but these are the rules. Um, but when you get to, when they ran out of numbers, they had to start with letters. So the difference between a number one drill, um, 228 thousandths, and an A drill, which is um, 234 thousandths, you see there's a very small difference between them. And then the next one goes bigger than that. If you, you have a PDF um, in this module, you need to um, print it out and look at it. Um, there's what a twist drill looks like, the body, the shank. Um, those are parts of the dr twist drill. They have um, those flutes are the open part. The margin um, is simply a little extra metal. It is not a cutting surface. The cutting surface is the chisel edge, which is that curved area that goes around on either side. Um, you'll notice that the chisel point, that they, that it doesn't come to a real point. It comes to a little flat area. Um, and when you watch my video about center punching, um, You will see that you've got to make a big enough dent, a big enough hole, to fit that um, what can be a pretty large size um, chisel inside that hole. Now the angle, it's 118 included angle, side to side, 59 degrees in either direction. Um, that is not fictitious, it's been calculated to be what it is at the best angle to get the um, chisel point, chisel edge um, cutting most appropriately. Now, so at such an angle like that, if a drill bit gets dull, either you have to sharpen it with a special tool for sharpening, a special machine, you can't just walk up to a grinder and say, hey, I'm going to just sharpen this here, because um, you're never going to hit that 58 degrees by hand. Um, now, there are specialty drill bits out there um, that are made for drilling into different things. If you're going to drill into cement or ceramics, the um, angle is larger. If you're going to be drilling into plastics, um, that angle is smaller, narrower that's particularly useful if you're drilling into plastics. You want to go quicker so that you don't you cut rather than melt. Um, and so that'll, that angle makes them a lot sharper. Here's pictures of the basic um, drilling operations. And I'm going to go through each one of these as we go forward. And I've, as I, when I went through, previewed this, um, I realize I'm going to have to add some pictures that I normally would draw on the whiteboard. Um, and okay, I can do one of these things of switching around, but we'll, I'm not going to do that. Um, we're going to drill. I want to keep this asynchronous. Um, drilling. It's your basic drill, drill a hole. You saw an example of that in the videos. Um, they can go blind, it could be through hole. Um, a blind hole doesn't go all the way through the material. Um, 
if you want something more precise in size, um, you would then come back and ream that hole with a reamer. Um, so you, you drill a hole slightly smaller than you want. And then you would use a reamer, which would be like one drill size larger, and it does actually cut on the edges of the um, hole and will make a very exact size. And you can buy reams in the same sizes that you do drills, all 152 of them. Although I can't imagine a really small, actually I'm not sure, because I can't imagine a number 60 reamer. Okay. Boring is a single point cutting, um, making large holes of special sizes. We're going to talk about boring um, a little bit later in the course. Um, but there's also a term called counter boring, and that's where you cut a little flat after you've drilled the hole. And that is so that you can put a fastener head in there. If you noticed when um, on my video when I dropped a flathead screw, or not a flathead, but a um, panhead screw on the top of the um, piece of metal where I drilled the hole. You have, um, I could have drilled a counterboard and made a bigger hole of it so that that screw head would fit all the way into, would again go below the surface of the um, material. Again, this is one place I need to have another, um, I need to make a drawing to, to show you what I mean by that. Um, countersinking is when you put a, an angle on it. Again, in the video I showed you where I had countersunk one hole, and you can drop that screw all the way in there and it will stay flush. Um, so it's, you can also use, you saw how I used the countersink to deeper holes. <coughs> um, mostly you're making the spot for the flathead screw. Tapping cuts the threads. Again, I showed you it's in the video. Um, also a very common thing done. Spot facing um, is it's actually pre drilling operation. It's when you actually cut a um, you have a round surface and you can't, well, even if you try to center punch on a round surface, um, the center punch is going to fall off. And if you try to drill, the drill's not going to line up. So you take a little spot and you face it by grinding or filing or milling a little flat spot on that round part of the bar you're drilling and then you have a flat space that you can counter that you can center punch and drill into without um, and you can make that little flat smaller than the size of the hole assuming you're making a pretty decent size hole and nobody would ever know it was there if it's a very small hole you might end up with a little flat around the round part but it's not a big deal center punching is um, where you saw, you saw me in the video do it, where you punch a little hole in a mark where, um, where you have your work, um, locate your hole to find it. Um, if you have an automated operation, you don't really do that. Um, you would, in a CNC machine, that would be drilling a lot of different holes, um, you pretty much don't worry about the drill bit wandering. Um, center drilling uses, uses center drill. Um, I did not show a center drill in my videos on drilling. I may, I may go back and add a few things because I, I realize that there's some things, just pieces that I haven't got to show you. Um, but it is shown in the milling videos, which you will see a little bit later. It's a special drill that's really big, really fat. Um, it won't let you, won't wobble, it won't bend. Step drilling is 
starting out with a small hole and making it progressively larger. If, for example, you wanted to have um, a hole that's the A size, uh, first letter drill, that was um, 234 thousandths diameter, you might start with a um, drill half that size and then open it up to that last one so you would step up the, the size of the hole. Um, it does reduce wear on the drill bits. Um, and now you saw, you'll see in my videos an example of peck drilling, which is when you drill in a little bit and back out, drill in and back out. Um, these are different things, but both good practices, and they both reduce wear on the drill bits. Here are some examples of them. Um, you can see the countersink or center drill in the middle. That is um, that big fat center drill that I was talking about that um, it, it locates is very reliable where it um, locates itself. Counterbore is kind of an awkward thing. We've got a few around, but um, that round part on the right side it would be the size of a drill and that would go into the hole that you drilled and then the counter bore would actually make a flat spot. The countersink showed you one of those reamer and boring bar and cutter. We'll, we'll get to a boring bar later. Um, there's a lot of different types of drills. I've got some stuff posted in the readings that show you lots of different types and ways that they look. Um, wood workers use a lot of twist drills too, but they have some others to be, make bigger, flatter um, holes that you can do in wood. There's um, ceramic bits, masonry bits, earth drilling bits. Um, those are really complicated. They are not, it's almost using the term bit is a little bizarre, um, but for these complex mining stuff, um, you can have some augers that drill into the dirt to plant a tree or something, and then you got ones that people use to uh, look for oil. It can be complicated. Okay, um, what do you use to drill with? You take that little twist drill and twist it in your hand? No. Um, it, it's interesting to look at how drills have evolved over the years going to be, if I can find it on the streaming server, I'm going to be posting a um, video about the, the drill, um, and it shows some in from history. Um, Vikings had a different type of drill, um, and people in the Renaissance had a different type of drill. It's actually very interesting. They were all hand-powered. Now, with the powered types of drills, um, You've got your battery powered or your corded system. And you will hear from the curmudgeon in some of the professional videos, and I'm not all that professional on YouTube, um, put some of those in there just so you should, you'd have a chance to hear what some old guys have to say about this, um, some of these things. And those guys didn't like the battery powered drills because they were right, the early ones, the battery didn't last long. It never occurred to these doofuses that you'd buy two batteries and charge one while you use the other. But um, today, the mainstay of manufacturing construction is, the ba is a um, battery-powered drill. And you can use drills for other operations, um, like screwing machine screws and things. Now the stationary machines, you can drill holes on a lathe. I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Um, on a vertical mill, I've got videos of that. There's special machines that drill multiple holes at the same time. But the standard system for drilling holes is with a machine called the drill press. And here are the different parts of it. Um, you saw the video that had these different parts, it has a table, and you can move that up and down, it has speed control, it has uh, the uh, 
spindle and the crank handle to ro to lower the spindle. Um, they're the parts. Know the parts for a test. Um, this is a drill chuck, and you'll see that you got to have a keyhole that twists it. And the older types, the new types, are um, have two rings, and you push them in different directions, and it can lock it in. And the, um, where the jaws are what holds the drill. There's three of those jaws. We're going to talk more about three jaw chucks a little bit later. Now, that tapered shank and tang is how um, a normal drill chuck is held in a drill press. If you pull hard enough, you can pull it out and then jam it back in. Um, so, just a little something to know if you ever need to change out your drill chuck on your drill press. You need to use a vise. Um, it's going to be a little bit more about vices later. There's also ways to lock things down with a block and do other stuff. You cannot and should not ever go up and hold a piece of metal in your hand and try to drill it while you're holding it in your hand. Unless, of course, you want to lose your fingers. Now, if you don't, if you want to have your fingers sliced off and make a lot of blood and be horrifying your parents, yeah, go do that. Um, but don't do that. You've got to put the material in the vise. Um, and you got to use parallels. You want to raise and lower these. This is for a bigger block, and you would want to have it lowered down. And you kind of want to have some of the workpiece above the vise, but in the pieces that I did um, showing, that I showed you, um, It was fully underneath the jaws of the vise, and that's okay too. You just don't want it down at the bottom. You want it held at the top of the vise. And finally, um, when you're going to locate a hole, you do it by the center of the hole, not by the edge of the hole. And if it's a blind hole, it's full depth of that of diameter is the depth of that blind hole, not to the tip, drill tip, because that drill tip, remember, is that um, 118 degree angle, and so it's a little bit longer, so you would go, you would say if you wanted a two inch deep hole, the hole itself is going to be a little bit longer than that, because of the angle part of the drill tip.